All right. So we always want to be fair. And uh, you all know there's no love lost between ourselves and the Marianne campaign. Uh, she particularly did not appreciate our karaoke interpretation of, hey, Marianne, what's your game now? Can anybody play? Uh, she yeah. was really, reports are she was quite enraged by that. Uh, but, hey, fair is fair. Mary Ann is crying foul about ba the ballot access in Massachusetts. Massachusetts is the latest state to just decide, hey, nobody else is running. Um, so Mary Ann Williamson is crying foul after the Massachusetts Democratic Party submitted only President Joe Biden's name for the state Super Tuesday presidential primary ballot. Dem Chair Steve Kerrigan's misplaced attempt at protecting Joe Biden robs Massachusetts Democrats of their voice and choice in the upcoming election. Williamson, the long shot Democratic presidential candidate, wrote in a post on X, formerly known as Twitter. They always have to do this Prince thing with it. Can't they just say X? Yeah. The artist formerly known as Twitter on Wednesday. This action is a flagrant violation of DNC rules and process. Massachusetts Democrats are the latest in a string of state parties to leave the, excuse me, president's challengers off their list of candidates for the primary ballot in what Biden's rivals have decried as incumbent protection that disenfranchises voters. Oh but there are two other. God. <laughs> I know. Who'd have seen that coming? But there are two other ways to get on the primary ballot in Massachusetts. Candidates can submit 2,500 nominating signatures to local elections officials by Friday, or the Secretary of State can add candidates who have been, quote, recognized by the national media if their party doesn't put their name forward. See, Kate, and I told you we should have run as Devo. We could have been yeah. recognized by the national media, and we might have gotten on the ballot. Uh, Bill Gavin, the Secretary of State, hasn't made, quote, hasn't made a determination about who would qualify for the ballot as a nationally recognized candidate at this time, unquote, because the signature deadline has yet to pass, a spokesperson said. Both Williamson and Representative Dean Phillips, or should I say friend of show Dean Phillips, have pulled <laughs> yeah. nomination well, we'll papers see. according for to now. Calvin's office for now. Um, yeah. A representative for Williamson's campaign granted anonymity to discuss campaign strategy, said, my God, my God, don't leave us alone with her. Please help me. <laughs> it doesn't say that. doesn't say that. She, stop her before she throws another stapler. Uh, said the campaign does not plan to submit the necessary signatures by Friday and is instead relying on Galvin to add her to the ballot. Her campaign only submitted a ballot request to the state Democratic Party last week, the party said. Quote, we were going through the process as set by the state party in the DNC, and it has only been in the last 48 hours that we learned of the chair's decision to do this. So we were sort of strung along until the last minute, the representative for Williamson told Politico. Candidates could pull papers as early as September, according to the Secretary of State's office. Uh, Phillips' campaign does expect to meet Friday's signature deadline. Katie Dolan, a spokesperson for the Minnesota congressman, who is challenging being left off the ballot in Florida, North Carolina, and Tennessee, said in a statement that, quote, we are frustrated that yet another state Democratic Party is choosing to give in to the culture of coronation over competition. We will once again be pursuing all available avenues to get on the ballot. Unquote. Submitting only the incumbent's name for the presidential primary is not unusual in Massachusetts. The Massachusetts GOP put forward only then President Donald Trump's name in 2020, even though the state's former governor, Bill Weld, was among his challengers. Galvin later placed Weld on the ballot. OK, so I don't know what part of we are a private organization that could pick the candidates in a back room smoking cigars like they used to in the old days all these people who decided to run in a democratic primary did not understand did you see how they handled primaries when it was open when there was no incumbent what on earth did you expect i can, i can understand and I, and i hope that the that the her abused staff who claimed that she was on a book tour were right because otherwise this means she's delusional at a completely different level where she actually thought she was running in a legitimate democratic primary. I could see it as a book tour, but what, what did you actually 
think that there was going to be some honoring of some democratic process here. Dean Phillips, I don't know enough about him, but same question. They literally went into court and said the game is rigged and we have a right to rig it. What the fuck are you thinking even being involved in their primary process? Of course, they're going to rig it against you. If you were to actually, as happened with Bernie, if by some chance this would never happen, but if by some chance you actually got close to winning, they'd sabotage you. They just like they did to Sanders. Like what part of that were you not paying attention to? Uh, yeah, I mean, the Marianne campaign was always going to end this way. And, um, which is why we and guys like Nick and CJ over at RBN, you know, caution people not to get invested because this was just going to be a money pit and a, and a time suck. Um, I, I feel like a lot of her supporters are very young, very young, like Gen Z, who were probably 13 or 14 during that first Bernie campaign, which means they just don't remember how it went. So That's they the may TikTok, have come right? into this think and TikTok, right? They may, they may have been uh, going into this thinking that, yeah, this is going to be an uphill battle, but it's a battle. No, there was no battle. There was never any battle. They just told you there. Uh, first, Florida canceled the primary. Then now Massachusetts takes them off the ballot. North Carolina and Tennessee uh, decide they're not even really going to have a, any sort of contest uh, at all. Um, now, in Dean Phillips' case, uh, of course, that is a no-shot candidacy. In his case, it may be a final sort of fuck you to the party because he's not seeking another term in Congress. Like, he's out after this. So this may have just been him going out in style, <laughs> you know, uh, challenging Joe Biden, figure he's got nothing else to lose. Like, he's not going to try to maintain a relationship. just got to the other side of the bridge and decided yeah. to torch it. Exactly, because, you know, th- he's not going to be able to maintain any kind of relationship uh, with any of his peers in Congress anyway now. Like, once you do a thing like this, that's it. You're out of the club at that point. You may as well quit. That's why, you know, someone like Marianne, as much as just a total fucking waste of time, she could do it because she's not in Congress. She's an right. author. She's right. a self-help person. RFK, same thing. He's not there. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to coexist with the people who he's poking in the eye just by running. Uh, right. Once you cross them like that, you're out. And so after this, you know, I would imagine, you know, Dean Phillips campaign probably suspends after New Hampshire would be my guess. Uh, maybe they stick in until Super Tuesday for what? I don't know. I don't know what ballots they're on. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, this was always going to end this way. We always knew this was going to end this way. And, uh, you know, a year later now she's saying, well, turns out this whole process is rigged. And now you are back. If you were a Marianne person, I mean, Marianne has very, very uh, small base of support compared to the two Sanders campaigns, obviously. But, you know, she's polling at 10 to 13 percent. I think most of those people in that campaign know that she's not going to win. It, it's not the same. It doesn't sting as hard because with the Sanders campaign, we actually felt we had a chance. I think right. most Marianne supporters understand she has no chance. But the ones who were really, you know, devoted to it the ones who are really committed to it the ones who really took kyle kalinsky's word and said we have a real opportunity here everybody they're going to be spending 2024 just the way we all spent 2016 and 2020 oh we got screwed what do we do now do we suck it up and vote democrat anyway do we not vote at all do we vote green do we do blah 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 that was just a place that i wasn't going to go again um i didn't really engage in much of that in 2020 in 2016 i did um, but I, I could tell that this was just a third repeat, you know, this is BS. So what is it? Fool me once. Shame on uh, you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. There's, there's no, it doesn't even get to a third point because how, how deluded do you have to be to go back there a third time? Well, you have to be deluded enough to support Marianne Williamson. And this is why we reacted strongly to a lot of the left pundits who were veterans of both Bernie campaigns. We're not talking about 19 year old kids who don't know any better. You're talking about people who are veterans of those two Sanders campaigns, um, steering people down this road again. You know, that's why we had a very strong response to that. Please clap. <laughs> 